In this video, we're going to look at source conversions. The basic idea is that we can have a voltage source with a series impedance and a current source with a parallel impedance. If we get the values right, we can replace one with the other and the remainder of the circuit will behave in the same exact way. This will help us in certain situations to simplify circuits and ease the burden of analysis. So the question is, how do I get the values from one to the other? Well, the impedance part is simply transferred over. In other words, this series impedance is equivalent to this parallel impedance. As far as the voltage and current values, we simply do a maximizing check with either open or shorted load. In other words, imagine sticking an ammeter in here in the shorted case, figure out what that current is, that's going to be the value of this current source. On the other hand, if I had the current source, I would imagine putting a, a voltmeter or an oscilloscope out here and see what the voltage would be. And that value is the value of this source. Okay? So let's take an example. We'll take a circuit with two different sources. We'll start with a voltage source that is in series with a nice little complex impedance over here. And that will be hooked into a current source over here. So I'll put some values in. We'll say the voltage source is 1 at an angle of 0. Uh, resistive value is 10. Uh, inductive reactance is plus J. Oops. 10. How's that for plus J? Uh, 20 ohms down here. And the current source will be 200 mils at an angle of 90 degrees. Now to solve this, because we have two sources, one possibility is to do some source conversions. So we could, for example, convert this voltage source with the 10 plus J10, turn that into a current source, and then what we'll wind up with is a circuit that's all parallel. We'll have two current sources and two impedances that are in parallel, and then we can just simplify that as a, as a parallel network find out what the voltage is. All right, that's one possibility. Another possibility would be to change this current source into a voltage source, then we would just have a simple series loop. And same sort of deal. Once that's done, we could find a voltage, let's say, from here to here. All right, so let's take a look at the first one, see what we aligned up with. All right, so we're going to focus in on this source back here. sort of isolate this and we sort of short this we think like I said in terms of having an ammeter here what do we wind up seeing for a current well with this short all this one volt source drops across the 10 plus J10 right this turns into a current source that looks like this we simply translate over the impedance value. Now it's in parallel. And the value of this current source will simply be this voltage, 1 at an angle of 0, divided by the impedance it drops across, 10 plus J10. All right, so calculating that out, you'll get... Uh, 70.7 .7 mils at an angle of negative 45 degrees. So I can take this, plug it back into my original circuit, and solve. So replacing this, oops, we wind up with our new converted source, the impedance, So this is 70 mils and we have our 10 plus J10 and then the rest of the circuit which is the 20 ohm and the other current source. So that's all parallel. 
So what we'll do here is combine the two current sources, figure out what this impedance is, then we'll have one current source, one impedance, and we can figure the voltage, right? And that's the voltage that's back here in the original circuit, in other words, across that original 20 ohm. So we can do product sum rule on this, in other words, 20 times 10 plus J10 divided by 30 plus J10, All right? So product 20 times 10 plus J10 divided by the sum 30 plus J10, and that impedance works out to 8.94. at an angle of 26.6, or more simply, if you put this in rectangular form, it happens to work out to 8 plus J4, okay? Then we just combine the two current sources. So we have two current sources in parallel. All right, we've got the 70 mils, and we've got the 200 mils. Right? Don't forget the angles on those. Um, those two currents plus this impedance will give us this final result. Right, so these two currents together will give us 0 0.158 an angle of 71.6 degrees, right? So that's this guy over here. So that's just really a simple Ohm's law computation, right? The voltage across here, and remember this point from here to here is really from here to here, right? That's what we wind up with. So we could just use Ohm's law, all right? The voltage equals the current times the impedance. Plugging those values in, right, the 158 mils at 71.6 times 8 uh, plus J4 will give us 1.413, rounding this off, 98 degrees in volts. Okay? Now, we alternately could have taken the uh, current source and translated that one. So I'll sneak that down here, all right? So we basically have this. We have a current source and a 20 ohm, just sort of drawing it a mirror image. And that's supposed to turn into a voltage source with a series impedance. It turns into this. All right. And what is the value of the voltage? Well, we would simply take this current source That's the uh, 0.2 mils at 90. Open circuit, so we pass that through the 20 ohms. Okay, and that's going to get us basically a voltage at 4 at 90. Now I can take that, put that back, kind of like we what we did over here, put this back in with the original bit and see what we wind up with. All right, so here's the original left-hand side. Oh, I should indicate my reference polarities. Current's going up, so this is plus to minus top to bottom. So here's the first one, the one at zero. 10 plus J10. And now here's the converted part. All right. Put a couple connection nodes in there. So the converted part would be the 20. And then my new source over here, which is 4 at 90. So that's just a simple series loop. And again, if I want to find that same voltage, which is from here to here, right, where we basically where we cut it each time, if I want to find that same voltage, you know, what would I do? Well, if we assume the current was going this way, right, we could say, well, that's going to produce a reference polarity like this across this impedance. So we could just take the one volt, add this, because it's going minus to plus, that's a rise, right? 
and that will give us this potential right here. So that voltage would be 1 at an angle of 0, plus this, which would be the current times this impedance. Okay? So what is, what is that uh, uh, potential that we see there? Well, basically that's the voltage divider. Right? What's, the, what's this total potential? Right? Instead of doing the current, I mean, you could do the current, but a little, little bit quicker would be to do a voltage divider. So you take that current and you just multiply it by this, or we do the voltage divider, which is the difference in voltages, right, times the thing you're interested in over the total. In rectangular form, this is fairly easy to draw out. So that voltage would be 4 at an angle of 90 minus 1 at an angle of 0. Right, so that's the total potential from here to here times the thing you're interested in, 10 plus J10, divided by the total, which is going to be 30 plus J10. Right? Or, like I said, you could take this voltage for an angle of 90 minus 1 on an angle of 0, divide it by 30 plus J10, get the current, take the current, multiply by 10 plus J10. Right? You're basically doing the same thing here. You're just not explicitly writing out what the resultant current is. But in any case, once you grind through that, surprise, 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 you wind up with 1.413 at an angle of 98 degrees. Just like we did over here. Okay? Beautiful. Now, just, just to sort of cross-check this, you know, if you're a paranoid sort of person and you think, well... You know, those two things equal, but do they equal the original circuit, right? Well, we can just take this voltage, right? We go back and do a check via um, Kirchhoff, right? Do a KCL check. So if I look at, at that piece of it from the original circuit, now, this is sort of what we have. So here's my 1 at an angle of 0. And we have the 20 ohm coming down there. And then out here we have the current source, right? This is my original circuit. Now, what we do is we plug in this voltage. So we're saying reference polarity plus to minus this voltage is 1.413 at an angle of 98 degrees. Well, let me just define some directions for current. You know, and it doesn't really matter. We're just going to do a KCL summation. So however, however I define them, you know, it'll all work out if this number is correct. So just for convenience sake, I'm going to see this is coming in. This obviously is coming in, given the reference polarity there. And we'll just say that's out, right? So KCL says what comes in has to equal what comes out. All right, so on the out end of it, in other words, what's flowing down through the 20 is a fairly straight forward computation. That's 1.413 at an angle of 98 degrees divided by 20 ohms, right? 20 at an angle of zero. All right, so that's going to give us 70.7 mils at an angle of 98 degrees. Now, the incoming is this 290 plus this current over here. Well, what is this current over here? All right, what is this top current? Well, that's the voltage across those two values, 10 plus J10, divided by that impedance. All right, so, well, you know, plug it in, 1 at an angle of 0, minus 1.413 at an angle of 98, right? So that's this voltage, divided by 10 plus J10. So that gives me this incoming current, right? That works out to about 130 mils. at an angle of negative 94 and a half degrees. So if I take this current, add the 200, right? So you take this, add the 200 at 90, you 
you should get this. All right. In fact, you know, big surprise, you do. Okay. You could um, think of this in terms of a phasor diagram if it's not immediately apparent that these add up. You know, think in terms of something like this. All right. So I've got um, you know 200 at. Let's do it like this. 290, 200 mils. Then we've got uh, uh, 130, so that's going to be about maybe, you know, yay high, but at 94, negative 94.5, so that's coming out something like that. All right, so if you take that, kind of subtract it off of here, you now you are going to get something that goes out like this. All right, so here's this, this piece is just being translated up. So this, you know, does that look like it's going to be 70 mils at 98 degrees? Yeah, well, you know, if we had drawn it, that's not the greatest drawing. But, yeah, if you sketch this out on appropriate graph paper, you could see that's what you're going to get, right? Or, you know, you could just get your calculator or, you know, put it in rectangular form and add the pieces, however you want to do it. But uh, it does, in fact, equal, right? So there's our source conversions. So we have a nice way here to take this multiple source circuit, which we haven't seen before, um, and convert part of it. We have two different ways of doing this so that we can solve the circuit, right? Either way you do it, you get something that balances out, right? Because those two things are going to, those two ends are going to equal this out. And we're happy, All right? So we're going to, the next thing we're going to do is kind of go to the next step on this from source conversion to something called Thevenin's theorem. And uh, in the remainder of, of chapter 5 and chapter 6, we're going to be looking at more and more ways that we can solve circuits that have multiple sources in them. Right? Some of the things we're going to look at are the superposition theorem. We're going to look at, um, uh, as I mentioned, Thevenin's theorem, mesh analysis, and nodal analysis. Those are in the following chapter, chapter 6. Uh, but we begin here with the source conversion. So this is not going to solve everything for us but it certainly does help, right? There are certainly places where doing the source conversion will ease the burden, so to speak. All right, there you have it.